Hello, one and all. This is Brett, and welcome to another episode of Topo Ranger. I came back to Conewago Falls today because of what happened, I guess, last weekend or the weekend before that I was here. My other camera died, and all of my stuff was lost. I'm filming now with my new GoPro. Got out of the mouth so far, so good. So I decided to come back here today because, number one, the weather is beautiful. Number two, the location is beautiful pretty cool too and number three this could be the last chance I get to come out to the falls with the waters low the water is at 3.3 today which is pretty low it's getting close to three anything below three is really really good three and a half to three still pretty good however this time of year is when it's always really low and then it goes back up I like this spot because it provides some protection from the wind noise Let's get to the top of this rock real quick, just so we can get a panoramic view. Look at that. You see that? Huge area. And I know I've said that a million times, but this might be the first time you're watching uh, my channel and you might not know anything about it, right? So I have to mix in a little bit of the, the normal facts in with the new stuff. So right here, you will notice that there is a big gap here. Now I came up here once and I looked at this and I said, huh? There was a piece of rock here shaped like maybe like a piece of pizza and then it went that way and i thought wow that's pretty crazy but then i thought you know what that's not right because i started looking at the walls big pothole smaller pothole going down to a narrowness right and here's a, here's another even smaller pothole sh more shallow pothole which right broke off right there so then I thought maybe there was no piece here maybe this piece used to go here and then if you look you'll see see that curve look at that curve right the pothole gets narrow look at this pothole gets narrow flat flat then you have the big pothole that's like Big Bertha size here there you have the pothole so what happened was this used to be like this and not only did it move down river but it also like that and the reason i'm showing you this specific one is because it's so good at showing the force of the water now there's a lot of rocks like this around here that were broken but look at the size of the piece that broke off. Let's climb up to the top of this one where we can get a really good view of how big that rock. See, there's my backpack. There's a bottle of water. That's a liter of water for, for scale. Look at the size of that rock. How, how much force do you need to push that thing? And that has a lot to do with just the way I'm thinking about this area because one of the things you start to ask yourself is, you know, how did these rocks move? Obviously it was water that moved them, but could a, a normal flood, like let's say, let's say Hurricane Ida that moved through here, I think it was 2018. Pretty sure this was, this would have been underwater, but is that enough force to move something that heavy? So when I come up here, the question in the back of my head is always, how much water did it take? Could a hurricane like Ida, 2018 do that could a flooding event like Agnes right do that I don't know in my mind maybe Agnes could do it at the, at the top end of the, of the of the spectrum when it was flooding the most and there was the most power coming down here but even that seems a little bit much because look at this thing it's huge I mean I, how many tons does this thing weigh I know that water has a great potential to move stuff and you can have a little bit of water can actually push a lot so i don't know that's what i'm saying i probably need like a hydrologist or somebody like that to uh to really figure that out in my mind it was the mega floods that moved stuff like that it was the mega floods that did a lot of the erosion here created a lot of these forms if you assume that there were these series of mega floods at the end of the coming down off the last ice age then that would be a good explanation and then all the seasonal flooding you get here 
and even the, even the Agnes events, you know, they don't really they don't really do much to this. So let's get up there a little bit. There's something I want to see if I can spot. Let's head back up that way. We were just down there is about. That's the main channel of the river. So what I wanted to show you here was another thing that I noticed that I'm, when you think about it, you're like, well, how did this happen? Let's look at this, this rock right here, okay? This is one piece, one solid piece of granite. Now, I don't know if, the, if this is bedrock or if this is a floating piece. To me, it almost looks like bedrock. Okay, one piece. Now what you'll immediately notice here is that most of the top of the surface of this rock has this texture. See that texture is kind of rough. It's not real smooth. And then you look over here and you'll see this classic smooth texture that you get, obviously with water with a lot of grit and sand scouring, smoothing this out, right? See that line? So it goes from rough to smooth. So basically what that means is that there used to be more to this rock. So this rock used to have a piece on top of it. Now, how big that piece is, I don't know. If I look over here, there are some forms that come up out of the river that are 10 feet high, like right there. So you're looking at this, you could have had a, I mean, I don't know how high it was, but it was here. But the point I'm trying to make is, aside from possible frost wedging, the freeze thaw, freeze thaw, I mean, obviously that would be a factor, but if it's not that, then there's only one way that this rock, as big as it is, got broken. How would a rock this size, boom. And you can even see in the angle, see this thing of water here? This is not a smooth, nice smooth looking pothole as we normally get. This is sharp edges, right? So this here was solid rock where I'm standing right now. So in my mind, the only thing that could do that would be another rock or a boulder or, or a, a series of, of rocks, a series of impacts where you had rocks of some size coming down river, right? Coming down this river, right? Maybe during one of those mega floods. It hit so hard with so much force that it sheared the top part of this rock, boom. And if you look at the area immediately surrounding this rock, you will see there are one, two, three, four, five. Six. I mean, there are a lot of boulders in this immediate area that also show the similar smooth rough, right? So this might have been up here. It might have broken off in a, in a series of maybe not all at one time, maybe over a series of, of these mega floods. And this isn't the only place that that happens. For instance, if you look scanning, what do you see? Smooth, 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 right here. There's like a little area where there's a lot of breakage. Let's see if we can get out to, uh, out to that rock there. Most of this stuff is normally underwater. So now we're out in the main channel. This is where all the river's coming through here. The dam is, as far as I can see, there's no water coming over the dam. At 3.3, that would make sense. And here's another one, look at this one. This is actually even a better example. You see this? That's granite, and look at the top. Rough, rough, but not super rough. Rough with a little bit of smoothing. The sides, obviously, are smooth like this, smooth like that. So this piece here had something on it, like this, right? Megaflood comes down, hits that with something, knocks it over. This whole area is littered with sharp-edged, rough, not smooth, boulders right there 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 see them all and then right here is that field i'm talking about but i think this whole thing here and it's kind of exposed it's right out it's kind of right in the middle of the river in a way right this whole island here this whole area here used to be a lot more articulated in terms of the morphology the shape of the rock and it used to look a lot more like that 
that's the one I think I was at where you have this whole kind of separate distinct area with these beautiful curry forms potholes arches but at some time a whole bunch of something came down this river and it wasn't just one spot it was a whole field boom 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 it was bombarded probably with I would imagine multiple multiple boulders coming down here over time bam slamming in crushing it breaks off and this is not something I noticed right away if you are new to the channel and you, and you haven't seen maybe this is the first video you've watched go back and watch my previous Conewaga Falls episodes where I hit some of the uh, some of the main what I call monster potholes which are the really really big ones and there's quite a few of them up here um, but I don't want to go to the same do the same thing every time I come up here so today I'm not gonna hit like the spider hole or Big Bertha or the crow's nest or Enoch Rock that one's a fairly recent find of mine and I just really like it but go back watch watch those videos and you familiarize yourself with with Conewago Falls so now I'm gonna to try to spend a little time and find that one monster pothole that has people had, had carved their names into the rock. And one of the dates is like in early 1900s. I've been meaning to show that one in the video for a long time. I think it's right around here somewhere. Now what about this one, is it here? Is this it? I wanna say I've been in this one before. This one is neat because at the bottom you see, it's got a very, very small, little pebbles pebble size rocks a whole bunch of it and you can get down in there and that's probably a pretty cool shot all right let's keep looking for that other one I think it's over here somewhere this is an example of another feature that I've come across here uh, more than once. I, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> I, I, in my mind, I call it the nozzle effect. It's when you pushing water through a very tight space and there's like a thin lip. If the water comes through that pressurized, it would cause a lot of turbulence right after that narrowing, I think. Almost like a nozzle on a hose, like on a hose or whatever. This one goes straight through. But this one has like a little nozzle on the end. And I got my light here. There, you see that little, that's a narrowing, but what you get right beyond that, it, it thins out there. So the question is, is the water coming up through or is it going down into? I wanna say it's coming up and that this pothole was actually formed by water swirling up through that little nozzle there. Lots of birds up here. So we came from there. River's over there. I think what we're looking for might be right here. Now the only problem with this one is getting up on top of the rock. If you want to come at it from the, the top side. But what we're going to do is come at it from underneath. And there are a lot of these detached pieces. The rock spider hole is in is a detached piece. This one is huge. This is detached completely. This one, I think this one is completely detached. This one's even bigger, right? And the question again, the question is, if you get a rock this big and it's detached from the bedrock by erosion and it move, how, how much water do you need to move this? All right, yeah, I definitely think this is it. So let's see if we can get under here and then up first. I think this is definitely it. See that? That's looking straight up. So the trick is you got to get under here far enough so that you can actually put your head up without banging your head on, on the rock. I should really have my helmet on. Oh, smart. Oh, and there it is. It's not quite as big as the other ones, but because it's in a, in a big mothership rock and it, that's detached, 
and it is still pretty big. Um, I call it a monster pothole. And also because it has these. BW Rain 10109. So the question is, is that 2009? Or is that 1909? To me, it kind of looks the, the lettering style, the font style looks pretty formal, which to me would, would mean 1909 or even 1809. Although I don't know, is this, this format here, is that a modern format? 10109 with the slashes. Maybe that wasn't a thing in 1909. Maybe that would be evidence for this is 2009. But some of these other ones look pretty old too. I mean, look at that G right there. Like who makes a G like that? Or like that, look at that. It's very specific, the way that G is made. And I mean, it is somewhat weathered, although people have already been coming here and doing this. See, this one says 98, 4298. And that's just like scratched in there. This one, I don't know, what do you guys think? 1909 or 2009? Here's another one here, hold on, D. This one is a D and a D. Now that looks like it's a little deeper. Hey, it's very bright. Whoa. <laughs> And you can see here the entrance to this is really quite large. It's a lot bigger than the spider hole. If you do come up here and you're not comfortable going down the spider hole because it gets narrower and it's, it's deeper, this is a good one to come to because you get kind of the same effect, but it's a lot easier to get in and out of. And the, uh, and the bottom of it is much larger. I think I found my cover shot. Nice place to get out of the heat too. You got like a little, almost like a little seat here. Let's call this one the rain hole. Cause that guy's last name was Rain. R-A-I-N-E. And we're right below the third power line here. Okay. So if you're looking for this stuff and it's hard to find, uh, the spider hole and the rain hole here are both almost directly under the third power line cut. So that narrows it down a little bit more for, a little bit more for you. <laughs> We're going to go check it out from the top just so you get a better idea of what it looks like. I did want to point this out <laughs> real quick, which is another very interesting feature. To me, this kind of thing can only be done with water that has a lot of grit in it. Regular floodwaters, I don't think, couldn't do stuff like this. You need that sandblasting. Here's the rain hole from the top. It's got a nice, nice shape there. You had a good time. Make sure you hit subscribe, ring my bell. Follow me for on all the platforms. Share me on all the socials. This is Brad for Topo Ranger, and I'll see you next time.